Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie with Annie's Hoya Jungle. And today I wanted to show you guys my new grow tent. Today I wanted to show you guys my new grow tent and how I have that set up. I wanna go show you guys what I've got in there. I wanted to show you guys how it looks like so far. So, let's get right into it. Okay guys, so this is my grow tent. Um, I bought this off of Amazon and I currently have it set up in my garage. It is a, I believe a four by eight grow tent. And it has a dome roof, which, you know, it's okay. I feel like I'm losing some space with it, but I don't know. I kind of think it works too. So I'll show you what I mean when we go inside, but this is what it looks like. Um, these two doors here, they both zip in the front so I can open it this way or open it that way. And then on the back side of the tent, there are also two doors just like this that zip open all the way down. And then also on the sides here, I can unzip all of that. It goes all the way around to the side, um, which I haven't done. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna keep the humidity in there, but I mean, I guess you can if you need to, if you have to take it down or something. All right, let's go inside and show you what I have set up so far. Okay, so coming into my tent, this is what I have set up to the right side of the tent. I have a four by eight set up and it's actually pretty big and it's got a dome ceiling, which I'm kind of iffy about. I thought that I would use the ceiling space up top to hang plants, but I find it a little bit inconvenient at the moment. I think because I haven't figured out how to hang stuff up here yet without it being too close to the light. So I'm sure it'll be fine once I figure it out. But this is the Vivo Sun Grow Tent. It's the four by eight with the dome ceiling. And I also purchased a clip fan also from Vivo Sun and it clips right onto the pole here. It's pretty cool. It rotates and it keeps everything, you know, aired out. And I like it so far so good, no complaints. So as you guys can see, I have two shelves here. This is supposed to be one tall shelf, but the whole shelf, when I built it, it didn't fit all the way up because of the dome ceiling. So that's part of the reason why I don't like it because I ended up losing a lot of that space. So I ended up splitting the shelves into two and just added grow lights to each like section of the shelf except for down here I haven't added grow lights down here yet but this section of the shelf has grow lights and then down here has grow lights as well um, and I find that the plants that are in this section and in this section of the shelves are very happy because they're also getting reflective light from the mylar from this huge light right here. So I think it works out very well. So coming into this area, I just wanna show you guys really quickly. I'm not gonna go into detail about every single Hoya, but I just wanted to show you guys all the Hoyas that I have in here. So I have these that are currently hanging off of this pole and this one is my big Curtisii that I found at Lowe's for, I think it was like $15. And of course I couldn't say no, it's a Hoya and it's a huge hanging basket for 15 bucks. So I snagged it and she is doing really good. I've had her for 
I don't know, like three months already and she's doing very well. Next to that is my Hoya Crinkle 8 that I bought from Brie, the perky plant lady. And this Hoya is doing so good, you guys. She's giving me new growth constantly. And look at this. I accidentally ripped this leaf the other day. But she doesn't care. She's still growing that leaf. So it's all good. She's giving me new growth here. And new growth here. And also new growth here. So she's doing very well in this environment. She loves the extra light and the humidity. And honestly, I think all Hoyas love the extra light and humidity. Next to that is my Hoya Breviolata. And my Hoya Breviolata was in ambient conditions. And then I moved it into the grow tent literally like the first day after I set it up. And she like immediately started giving me new growth. Like this vine down here, all of this is new growth coming in. This is also a new vine pushing out new growth. And then these leaves right here and that leaf right there, all new growth as soon as I moved her into the grow tent. So she is very happy as well. Next to my Breviolata is my Hoya Fuwa and Fuwaensis. Fuwaensis. I never know if I'm saying that right. I hope I am. But either way, I'll put the name on the screen here for you guys. And this one is from my friend Xiomara at Casita de Sio. And she has the most beautiful, gorgeous, affordably priced Hoyas. I have a bunch of her Hoyas and they are all doing so good. And this one, you guys, look at those new baby leaves right there. Oh my gosh. This Hoya reminds me of Hoya Caldata without the Caldata shaped leaf. If you know what I mean. But like it's fuzzy and rigid like cardboard it's a really cool hoya so then next to that is my smaller curtisii that's you know doing okay i guess i don't know she was doing she was doing good and then she wasn't doing good and i think curtisii is like that so i'll let her go through her little teenage moment and i'm sure she'll bounce back real soon but yeah so then that is off of the hanging wall or the wall here. So then next to the wall is my first shelf. And this is where I keep like all of my taller trellis toyas and also the ones that enjoy being sun stressed and turn color with the, with higher light. So starting off, on this side is my Hoya Globulosa, and this one needs like a really, really big trellis. But right now she's just kind of like piggybacking off of everybody else, and she doesn't seem to mind it. Behind my Globulosa is my Hoya Carnosa Freckles Splash, and y'all, this Hoya is so adorable. Like look at the splash on that leaf and then hold on let me move this out of the way look at that and then look at that new growth coming in right there and right there this is such a cool hoya and i know like people are like oh it's just a carnosa that's splashy um yeah but it's also like a more rounded leaf than a carnosa i think I don't know. I really like it. I think she's cute. Behind that is my Hoya Carii Seedling. This Hoya is super tall. Um, I'm sure the camera is not going to capture how tall it is. And she keeps going all the way up there. All the way up there. But she grows really fast. And she's not typical of a Carii. 
in the fact that the leaves are like pliable, not like a carry eye leaf that's very rigid. And this Hoya, it doesn't mean that it's thirsty or anything. It's just whatever it was crossed with made the leaves more pliable, I guess. But she still kept her heart shape, which is really cool. And she grows really, really fast. I've cut this Hoya maybe like four times already for trades and to give out and she just continues growing next to my hoya carry eye seedling is my hoya sv png 422 and this hoya is also from siomara and i just recently bought this one so i don't have much experience with it but so far she's doing really good um she seems to be a thinner leafed hoya and she's got some, uh, what do you call it, sulfur residue. I like to spray all of my Hoyas that come in with sulfur, just kind of, you know, as preventative and to make sure that they're good. But so far she seems to be happy in here. Next to that one is my, this is my Hoya Obscura and she's going crazy with growth guys let me try to move this one out of the way just so you guys can see like how big this hoya is she fills up that trellis and just keeps growing it's crazy and then in front of that is my hoya glabra with these two beautiful new leaves that are coming in and right now you can't tell but she is rooted let me take it out she's rooted in water and these are all the water roots i still haven't figured out if i want to put her in pond or put her in like a soil mixture um i don't know let me know what what do you guys think for this big leaf hoya what do you guys think would be best do you think pond would be good or do you think putting her in a soil mixture would be better let me know so next to my hoya glabra is my newest baby my hoya argentia princess and i'm so happy to have this one because it's recently become very affordable to have a cutting I paid $60 shipped. So minus shipping, I paid 45 bucks for this cutting, which if you guys know, Argentia Princess was going for way, 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 way higher than that. Um, not that long ago. So I thought that was a great deal and I needed it in my collection. It's been a wish list of mine for a long time. And I finally got one and I'm so happy. I'm just waiting for her to root. She's currently rooting in Lekka and tree fern fiber with a water reservoir at the bottom. So yeah. Next to that one is my Hoya Balaensis with her newest leaf that has come in. Behind Hoya Balaensis is my Hoya Marillii. And she's doing amazing in here. Behind my Hoya Marillii, I don't know if you guys be able to see it, but it's my Hoya Geneve. And she goes all the way down there, but it's kind of hard to see. Next to Hoya Geneve is my huge, humongous Hoya Latifolia Album Marginata. Next to that one is my trellis Hoya Sunrise. And in front of that is my Hoya Carrii, which is doing so good right now. She's got a new leaf coming in and these two leaves here are new as well. Next to that is my Hoya Rebecca. And then, of course, my very dramatic Hoya Elliptica. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that I am having so much trouble with 
trying to bloom this Hoya. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. And I don't know, maybe you guys can give me tips on how to get this Hoya to bloom because let me tell you guys, she has two peduncles. She has one right here. And then right across from that, she has one right there. And so this is the fourth time that these peduncles have blasted. They get all the way up until they're about to bloom. So they get yellow and I don't know why. I'm not missing a watering. It's under consistent lighting and humidity. I don't know. This is the fourth time that it's happened and immediately after she drops like these yellow buds she's already she already has buds coming in like right under those so she's like dying to bloom there has to be something that i'm doing wrong i'm fertilizing every time i water i don't let her go all the way dry maybe i need to keep her a little bit more moist i don't know i don't know what else to do maybe i need to mist her maybe i need to buy an orchid fertilizer spray and spray her Maybe she'll like that. Let me know below what you guys think I should do with this Hoya to get it to bloom all the way because it's been such a pain in the butt. And I post it on Instagram every single time. And I know my followers on there are like, I hope she blooms this time. Well, so do I. But alas, here we are. So behind my dramatic Hoya elliptica, I have a hanging pot of Hoya Jennifer and then in front of that is my humongous Hoya chicken farm which is giving me new growth. That's a new leaf right there and this is a new leaf right there. Oh wait and there's another new leaf right here too. So she is doing really good and then in front of my chicken farm is my Hoya Finlay Sonii Nova. And this is a newer Hoya to me also by my friend Xiomara. So far, she's doing really good. I just haven't had her for that long, so I can't say if it's a finicky Hoya or not. But my experience with Finlay Sonii is that they're not finicky. They just don't require as much water as other Hoyas do. Next to that is my humongous Hoya Bermanica. This thing is like gorgeous. I love it. And then next to that one is my Hoya Matilde, which recently bloomed for me, but I caught COVID this past week and then my family caught COVID. So I wasn't able to capture good pictures of the bloom but I was able to catch something so if you guys follow me on Instagram you would see those pictures on there but I'll go ahead and post pictures here for you of what that bloom looked like so then behind my Matilde is my Hoya Australis which is doing phenomenal she's giving me new growth everywhere and then behind that is my very big Hoya fungi or fungi. She's very big, like really, really big. And then next to that is also my really big Hoya obavada. She comes all the way down here. And then on this side, she comes all the way down here. And we're not going to talk about this Bella. This Bella's not doing so hot. So, yeah, we ain't talking about that. <laughs> So then right below, this is the second shelf, and right below that is my Hoya Filaisonii Splash. And she has new leaves coming in. So she's doing really good. Behind that Hoya is my Hoya Erythrina. So then next to my Hoya Erythrina is my Hoya Crimson Queen. And then next to that, sorry guys, it's hard to get back here, is my Hoya Subquintuple Nervous. She's like really big. Let me see if I can show you guys. Let me move this out of the way. But that's my Hoya Subquintuple Nervous. 
And then next to that is my really big Hoya Crassi Pedialata. And then next to her is my Hoya Verticillata Splash. Next to Verticillata Splash is my Hoya Bahoy, which Hoya Bahoy is giving me, I've cut her, so she's giving me new growth at the nodes now. So that's exciting. And then next to Bahoy is my Hoya Surigaoensis with her newest leaf right here. And next to that is my Hoya Sarawak. And she has new growth everywhere. It's very hard to capture. Behind my Hoya Sarawak is my Hoya Irina. And that is all that I have on this shelf here. Let me put this back. Oops. Here we go. So then we're gonna move on to this side of the shelf. And right off the bat, you're gonna see my Hoya Hushkaliana, which is super big and long. And she also has a bunch of peduncles right there. And I saw another one, where is it? Right there. She blooms all the time consistently for me now. I just have to make sure to keep her watered. And she just constantly blooms. Then next to her is my Hoya AH030 that has a super long tendril. Then next to that is my Hoya Nabawensis Splash. This one is my Hoya Carii that's doing okay. I mean, she's giving me new growth here. So I'm assuming her roots are fine, but she's also like dehydrated. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that Hoya. And then next to that is my Hoya Hot Some Peen or IML 1438. And she's also giving me a lot of new leaves. And so then on the bottom shelf under that is my Hoya Clandestina Seedling. Next to that is my Hoya Memoria IR26, which I've recently cut for a trade. And you can't even tell because when I got this Hoya a little bit over a month ago, it was a lot smaller than what it is now. And this Hoya grows super, super fast. So thank you, Tia. I am always going to shout you out every time I put this Hoya up because she is beautiful. And I'm so happy that you sent this to me. So thank you, Tia, for this beautiful Hoya. This is my Hoya Polynera, and then next to it is my Hoya Polynera Splash. Behind that is my Hoya Imperialis. And then on the corner back there is my Hoya Isensis or Hoya Patrawalai 023. Then here is my Hoya Meridithii. Behind that is my Hoya Irina. And then next to that is my Hoya Parasitica or Hoya Verticillata Black Margin. And then in front of that is my Hoya Dakie. And then on this side is my Hoya Vitilinoides. And then next to that is my Hoya Obavada Splash, which I'm gonna come around and show you guys how cute she looks. So if we turn around from the shelf and we go this way, this is the other side of the grow tent. And on this side, I've created a grid wall, which 
I'm using currently for my smaller Hoyas that are in little three ounce cups. And I just kind of have them hanging on these um, metal clips on the grids. And so far they seem to like that. I have a grow light, a grow light bulb hanging like right next to them. But I think that they need more light. So I'm going to have to eventually change this out to something bigger or maybe stronger. But so far, so good. They seem to like it. And then there's nothing here other than like my bucket of soil mix. And this is what I use to water. And then I have this shelf here, which I was initially using inside of my house. Before I got the grow tent, you know, I had it up against a window and I had my Hoyas on it. And right now it's holding some props that I have here that I just recently acquired from a trade with my friend Danielle. We do like these really big trades a few times a year. And so she'll send me a bunch of Hoya cuttings that I don't have and then I will send her a bunch of Hoya cuttings that she doesn't have and then anything throughout the year that we both acquire we'll just send to each other. I very much enjoy trading with her and I hope that she enjoys trading with me and yeah thank you Danielle so much for these cuttings. I'm so excited to have them in my collection. Anyway let me show you guys these props because they're so there's a lot I need two hands I'll be right back okay so I moved them from down here to up here and I just wanted to show you guys real quickly what she sent me this is Hoya Sigillatus Silver Hoya Angleriana which okay earlier in the year I had sent her a cutting from my mother plant of Hoya Angleriana and my mother plant ended up dying but hers ended up doing really well and she offered to send me a cutting of her plant that I had originally sent her. So I thought that was really cool that she's gone full circle with starting with me and then going with Danielle and coming back to me. So yeah, that's Hoya and Gloriana. And then this is Hoya Bermanica. And I know I already have a Hoya Bermanica, but this Hoya is a different clone, I guess. This one has like the whiter leaf at the stem and then it tapers down to a pointy leaf. And she's like really dehydrated right now because she just got to me yesterday from being shipped. So I'm sorry if you can't really tell, but it is a different leaf than the Bermanica that I currently own. And next to her is Hoya Kanyaku Mariana. I think that's how you say it. Kanyaku Mariana. Behind that is Hoya Maniparensis. And she sent it to me with all of these blooms. So cute. Next to that is Hoya David Kamingii. And then this one is this one right here. Sorry. This one right here is Hoya AH001 Species Vietnam, which I have been looking for for a long time. It's one of my wish list Hoyas. And she sent me a cutting, and I'm so happy. Next to that is Hoya Parviflora. And then Hoya Shawnee. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sh Shani, Shani, let me know if I'm saying that right. Next to that is Hoya Discipule. I don't know if I'm saying that right either, but she is also dehydrated from shipping, so her leaves are a little flimsy right now, but it's okay. Um, she shipped it to me with these blooms, and the blooms are turning yellow, which is to be expected during shipping. Blooms usually don't don't last that long so I'm not surprised about it but Danielle did say that this blooms pretty quickly so hopefully soon once she's rooted and healthy and happy then she'll put out more peduncles so I'm excited for that 
this little one here is Hoya Ariadna. And then next to that is Hoya, I forget the name. I'm gonna put it up on the screen because I am blanking on the name of this one. But yeah, this is a fuzzy Hoya. Okay, so that is this little shelf here. And wait, I forgot to show you guys my string, my variegated string of hearts. And just a bunch of random clay pots and some cups and clips here. So then right directly next to that is, like I said, the Hoya grid wall. And so I'll show you guys all that I have hanging up here. Starting from the top, I have Hoya Lacunosa Fraser Hills. She's a really cute Hoya. She almost has like heart-shaped little leaves. So she's really cute. Next to that is a cutting of Hoya Sunrise that I took from my mother plant. And I'm just propping it here. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I don't know if I'm gonna create a second sunrise or if I'm gonna sell it or trade it. I'm not sure yet. But next to that is my Hoya Pubic Calyx. It was sold to me as pink silver and she's doing really good. I have her inside of my house right now, but she threw off like this node that had really splashy leaves. And I figured, you know what, let me cut it and prop that and see what happens. And so all of these new leaves that she's pushing out at the moment are also super splashy. So yeah, I cut it on 829. And she's been doing nothing but pushing out these splashy leaves. So I'm just going to let her do her thing and see how big she gets. And maybe she'll turn silver one day. I don't know. Okay, so next to that is my Hoya Bengviengiensis. I don't even know if I'm saying this right. But this thing, I know people say it grows really fast, but it really doesn't. It's been a one leaf, one node cutting since I got it, I don't know, four or five months ago. So it's meh right now for me until I guess until it starts growing and then it, it'll it not be mid anymore. So then down here is my Hoya Flavita. She's doing really good. She's pushing out new leaves. Next to that is my Hoya Kalina No ID. Also with new growth there. This is my Hoya Halilimba. And next to that is my Hoya Serpens. And there's my Hoya Hushkeliana variegated. This is my Hoya Wayetii variegated. Next to that is my Hoya Hushkeliana Albo Marginata. And then over here is my Hoya Affinity Kalina No ID. And what that means is that this Hoya looks like, Affinity means that it looks like. So basically this Hoya looks like, where is it? This Hoya looks like this one, like this Kalina but she hasn't been named yet so that's why they name it affinity kalina no id because she doesn't have a name even though she looks like the kalina i just showed you and so then what happens is eventually they will figure out if it is the same as the other hoya that i just showed you or if it's a different um type of hoya and then they'll give it its own name but I know that that takes a process so it might be it could be tomorrow it could be next month or a few years before we find out any name changes if any i'm not sure but under that is my hoya spectatissima and then next to that is my hoya kalina ir26 under that is another variegated Wyetii. And then here is my Hoya Mirabilis. 
And then next to that is my Hoya Lacunosa Variegated. And then if we move on to this side, this is my Hoya Polyneura Album Marginata. And then next to that is my Hoya Bicnellii. And under that is my Hoya Polyneura Silver. Which, if you guys notice, let me show you in better lighting. These leaves on the top, I had it super close to the grow light. And it developed these weird spots on it. So I had to move her back from the grow light. And she's giving me new growth now. And so far it looks really good. I have her, you know, pretty far away from the light. So I'm hoping that that's, I'm hoping that that's what it was. And it isn't something more serious, like a fungal issue or something, but. So far, so good. Next to that is some Hoya Matilde cuttings that I just propped a few days ago. Next to that is Hoya Castbergii. Castbergii. And then next to that one is my Hoya Polita species Bogor. I think that's how you say it. Next to that right here is my... Hoya Latensis, and then this is another clone of Hoya Mirabilis. This one here is my Hoya RHM 14-1, or 14-1, sorry. This is Hoya ETS 10. Above that is Hoya Parviflora Splash. And then next to that is Hoya Waymanie. And then this is Hoya Affinity Lambi. Then here on this side is my Hoya Latifolia Pot of Gold, which a lot of it ended up dying when I traded with Danielle a few months ago. She gave me such a beautiful specimen and a lot of it ended up dying and this is what I was able to save from it. And she's finally giving me new growth here. So I'm very happy about that because I thought I was going to lose it completely. Then next to that is my Hoya Paul Shirley Eye. And next to Hoya Paul Shirley Eye is my Hoya GPS 7240. And next to that is my Hoya Latifolia Bowie Bua. I think that's how you say it, Bowie Bua. Under that is my Hoya EPC 301, which is giving me, this is a new leaf, this is a new leaf, and then right here is a new leaf. And then this is my Hoya Biakensis with some splash coming in the leaves. And I think that is it for my Hoya grid wall. I think I showed you all of them. So that is it, my friends. That is the Hoya Grow Tent tour that I have promised you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry if some of the footage is a little bit dark. My, my light died in the middle of me filming. So yeah, good time. But yeah. Let me know down below if you have any questions or any recommendations. If you think I should set up this grow tent differently. If I should change out any lights or add more lights. Or what do you guys think? Do you think I have a good setup going here? I'm very curious to find out what you guys think. Also, if you guys have a grow tent, let me know. Let me know if you have a grow tent and what do you guys grow in there and how do you keep it? As always, thank you guys for watching and supporting my channel. Please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.